Today we're going to look at the chain rule. And the chain rule is one, is one of the last major rules for derivatives that we're going to talk about in calculus. But before we begin, though, let's take a look at some more analytic derivatives. We talked about these yesterday, the day before, with the product and quotient rule. So the following says, find the derivative at x equals 2. Now, if we notice for the first one, this is our product rule. So when we're taking the derivative, I'm going to use dy dx. This is my the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of our first. And we want to find it x equals 2, so we can write it this way, dy dx at x equals 2. Told you we see that notation sometime. And this is becomes f of 2, g prime of 2, plus g of 2 times f prime of 2. Now, early we got these from a graph, but now we're just going to get them from the value that they tell us. f of 2 is 3, g prime of 2 is 5, plus g of 2 is negative 1, and f prime of 2 is negative 2. And, of course, if we clean that up, we get 15 plus 2, which is... 17. Right there. Pretty easy to do. So for part B, part B here, this is our quotient rule. So therefore, if we take the derivative, we're going to use our rule low f of x d high g prime of x minus high g of x d low f prime of x over f of x squared. Now you might be wondering, Mr. Warnow, you did usually you usually do f over g? I know the rule that way. Well, be careful. Don't look at patterns. Just know the rules for it. Low d high, the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. So now, if I want to find the derivative at two, it's going to be f of two g prime of two minus g of two f prime of two all over f of two squared. And we can do this really quickly. f of 2 again is 3. g prime of 2 is 5 minus g of 2, which is negative 1, times f prime of 2, which is negative 2, all over f of 2 squared. So that becomes 9. And what do we get here? Oh, that's a lot of negatives right there. 15 minus 2. So I got 13 over 9. Hopefully that the guys got the same. Which the AP would even accept that too. Right there. Alright, so let's talk about the chain rule, or how we take the derivative of a composite function. You might remember a composite function is one function basically placed inside of another function. For example, f of x and g of x. Like if I have, let's say, f of x equals x squared, and g of x was, let's say, x plus 3. Well, f of g of x, you might recall, would be the function x plus 3 squared. We, wherever where there's an x for x for f, we just plug in the x plus 3. So today we're going to take a look at how we take their derivatives. And there's a lot of ways you can take these derivatives. I might show an example, uh, a proof of these. I might show one just a little uh, in another video. But let's just go ahead and take the derivative. To take the derivative, we have to look at the two parts or multiple parts of a function. So, for example, we have this outer function right there, f of x. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of that outside function. Think of it like a Tootsie Roll Pop. You eat the, you eat the outside of the Tootsie Roll Pop first, the candy shell. But the inside, the Tootsie Roll part, is still not being eaten yet. So that stays safe on the inside. But once that candy shell is gone, then we get to the inside part of our, of our Tootsie Roll. And then we take the derivative of g of x. So we get g prime of x. And that's our chain rule. You definitely want to put this in your note card. Sometimes we call this the derivative of the out, d out, times the derivative of the inside, d in. So d out, d in. And we can do this with multiple of them. Let's say h of x was the following. f of g of, let's say, m of x. Well, how would we take this function's derivative? Well, same thing. We start with the f, f prime, g of m of x, times, go to the next inside, which is our g of x, so g prime of m of x, and then I just have another inside, m 
prime of x. We and now you see why we call it a chain rule because we just keep on adding an extra layer of it, like a chain, like a chain link fence. Okay, so let's take a look at a few examples here. So find the following derivatives. Remember, no negative exponents or complex fractions. The only thing we don't like to have. So for number one, if I want to take this function's derivative, f prime of x, when I look at it, I have my outside function, which is this two-thirds power. So the derivative will become two-thirds, this is just power rule. The inside, remember, stays the same. Subtract one, because my power rule, negative one-third. Ooh, I got, negative, I got a negative power there. But multiply that by the derivative of my inside function. Well, the inside function is this x to the fourth plus two. Its derivative is just four x cubed. Now, this is my derivative, but remember, no negative exponents, so I have to get rid of that, which means it goes on bottom. So I like to play a game, what goes on top, what goes on bottom. Because this is one long product, I can write just a gigantic fraction bar. The two is on top, the three is on bottom. The x to the fourth plus two to the one third, that has to go on bottom. And what about the 4x cubed? It stays on top, plus 4x cubed. And there's your answer. Now, of course, you can simplify that to 8x cubed over 3 times x to the fourth plus 2 to the one third. And there's your derivative. Very easy to do. Now, number two, you could do quotient rule on this one. We'll talk about that. But because there's no x on top, if there's no x on top, I am going to rewrite this negative 7, this becomes 2x minus 3 to the negative 2. If there's no x on top, I could just bring that x up, and now I just have it basically, it's a power rule, or in this case a chain rule, because I do have an inside function, and there is my outside function. So it's a chain rule, because I have an inside function, but it's also a power rule, because I'm just going to, for the outside, I'm just going to bring down that power. So my derivative, f prime of x, drop your power like it's hot, becomes positive 14, 2x minus 3, subtract 1, negative 3, times the derivative of the inside now, which is just 2. And I can clean this up pretty easily. The only thing that goes on bottom is going to be the 2x minus 3 cubed. The 14 and the 2, they stay on top, and that's going to give us 28. And there's our derivative. Slow that one down if you need to go over that one again. Alright, for number three, we'll stop here for number three for the first part. So for the first, for number three, taking the derivative, we have to look at two things. Now you might notice on the inside, we have a quotient rule. But on the outside, we have this power rule. So the question students always ask is which one goes first? I use something called big picture. In the big picture of the things, are we dividing or are we using an exponent? Well, the exponent is on the, is on the furthest part. It's the biggest part of it. So that's my big picture. So we're going to do the power rule first. So when we take the derivative, my rule is take the derivative of the outside function, and that's this whole big picture out here. That's 2 times x squared over x minus 3 to the first. Don't forget to subtract 1. Multiply that by the derivative of the inside. Now, the derivative of the inside, again, is quotient rule. So I'm going to have to use my quotient rule. Low, d high, minus high, d low, which is just 1, divided by the bottom, x minus 3 squared. Don't simplify it. That's all I want. That's all we want. The AP will be okay with that, okay? So take a look at that one again. You will definitely see this type of question. All right, we're going to stop here for part one. Go to part two. We're going to take a look at the world's worst problem, number four. This question right here will be on a quiz. It will be on your test. We love this question. Okay, so I'll see you guys in part two.